I just pulled into the campground and I did not expect this. We open tomorrow and we had several inches of snow last night. It is a sloppy, wet mess and we have so much to do and everything's buried in snow. This is gonna be a problem. We not only have so much work to do, but we also have to make it presentable to guests. We have equipment everywhere. We were gonna do fencing. We have sticks buried underneath the snow that we were gonna clean up today. Today, the plan's gonna change slightly. It's gonna go from getting this place looking tip top and ready for summer to just being passable. I think we're gonna have to do what we can, work around the snow, move the trailers around, get them repositioned, try to clean up the bigger sticks. Uh, we have to get the heater set up in the tents. I mean, we're, we're dealing with freezing temperatures at night still. I have to go around and I have to check the water that we turned on a few days ago, which I'm not looking forward to because this campground is still not a winterized campground. So it's not able to be open in the wintertime, hence the water being turned off in the winter. So turning it on a few days ago only to have now winter weather return is definitely problematic. Oh my gosh, I'm just seeing something really bad. This is not good. Oh my God. Our brand new domes that went in. Holy smokes. This dome got blown right off of its platform. This is seriously not good. And I knew this could happen. We didn't have them finished. They, they hadn't been cinched down yet because we still have to install the windows and do a whole bunch of other stuff. But this weather over the last few days has just destroyed our ability to get stuff done. We've been scrambling and this is really not good. All right, well, we learned a valuable lesson. Don't leave the domes unfinished. Oh my gosh, this one too. Ah. Uh, all that work. We we spend so much time and effort getting these covers on and getting these domes set up. I don't know what to say. This is a lesson learned. We should have finished the dome setups. We got them set up. We got them looking good. We didn't cinch the covers down onto the actual frames and we didn't buckle them down to the deck. And that's the most significant thing that we didn't do. If we had fastened them down like we should have, they wouldn't have blown off like this. And the blowing off is probably the worst part because I, I don't even know if they're damaged. The frame might be bent. Hopefully the cover's not ripped, but not the way to start the season. We open tomorrow. <laughs> And it looks like a bomb went off here. This is really bad. So all of this trash was supposed to get picked up as well. Hopefully it's still gonna get picked up tomorrow before we open. But this was an entire structure down here that we just took down. All of this wood was supposed to be chopped up for firewood. Couldn't get chopped up in this weather. It could be really easy to get demoralized by all of these issues that the weather is causing us. But the one thing that we're trying to remind ourselves is just how far this campground has come over the last year. So instead of sulking in the things that we can't control, we're shifting our focus over the next 12 hours to make sure that the guests that check in tomorrow are gonna to be as comfortable and enjoy their experience as best as possible. So here's a last minute upgrade, a much needed upgrade considering all the snow is we're changing out all the air conditioners in the dome tents to air conditioners with heat pumps. So we're gonna have heating as well as air conditioning, which on a day like today, it's pretty obvious that that was needed. So there's our heat pump and air conditioner. Fortunately, the holes that were made for the previous air conditioner, which didn't have a heat pump, were all the same, more or less. So we were able to get these set up pretty quickly and tested them out. We had the heat running in all of the units during the day and we didn't trip any breakers, which was a great sign. So that means that we are hopefully not gonna have any issues as people use these this summer, which is very different than last year because we had 
plenty of electrical issues that were causing us a lot of a lot of pain. This is the wood burning stove, which people can definitely use, but we're hopeful that this reduces the need to use this because of the heat pump. Because of the expected freezing weather, we had turned off the pump to the well house. And now I gotta turn it back on, make sure that nothing broke and everything's in good shape. So just kick it on and gonna go see, make sure the water's still running in all the different places. I'm heading up to the Rex now, which is our hotel up the road. And I gotta get the pump, a uh, sub pump that basically put in the hot tubs and pump water out. The water has been accumulating over the winter from rain and snow. And unfortunately as well, there's a lot of ice in there. So I'm not sure how well we're gonna be able to get all the water out. Maybe the ice will just be able to lift out. Um, well, I got dirt on my face. Um, but essentially, that's something that we have to do today because the hot tubs are something that guests really love and it's a big part of the stay when you're staying at Ferncrest. So yeah, again, this weather is just like crazy. I mean, the fact that we have ice in our hot tubs and have to run water from our pump and our hoses, it's just a big cluster of a mess with what's going on. But I mean, we're in Northeastern Pennsylvania I can't really complain. It is gorgeous. It would be a lot more gorgeous if it was December or January though and not April. It's not horrible. I mean, it's it's certainly not clean. But how am I gonna all that out? Yeah, how how would we? Because there's, I mean, see, these not having drains is a big big issue, huh? Yeah, it really is. So much easier to spray it. Uh, Shop vac, you think? Do we, the only thing I could think was. Do we have an to, operational one? No, we need to go to the Rex and get that blue one. That one works though for water and stuff for stuff like this. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So Meg, right? Yeah. Hi. Me Meg, you got your trailer. I did. I got Bullet Hole Betty. Finally. I love her. She's even more beautiful in person. What are you going to do with her? Um, TBD kind of how we're going to do it, but definitely some kind of pop-up dessert experience. I don't know exactly what it's going to be, but it's going to be different because that's why I had to have her because she's different. So something like that for my Sugar Lush business. That's so cool. I can't wait to visit. Thanks so much.
We've got a burn going on with Chris here. All the extra scrap, as well as just loose brush. It's not all the brush, obviously. We're not trying to clean up the campground entirely. It's, it's, it's beautiful to have a natural setting, but there was a lot of debris from the last week of storms, as well as the entire winter. So we got a brush burning right here. It's a nice wet day, so it's a great day to do it. And uh, tomorrow we open, so we gotta get it as nice looking as possible while still leaving it in a really campy, natural setting. This is an area that needs a lot of work. This is gonna be where our new location for ice cream and coffee service is. So we try to get these placed, but because the ground is so un unlevel, we need to do some work here. So maybe perhaps tomorrow we can get this area leveled out or worst case scenario, we can just level out the trailers with blocks. But we really wanna make this space a lot more engaging and have it be a place where campers can easily see and easily access. So we have the coffee trailer and then the ice cream trailer. These are not the spots they're going to be in. So that's another project for pre-opening. And hopefully these will be ready to somewhat operate in the next week or so. This is the other trailer that we renovated last year. And last year it was out on the front lawn being used as a, as a store, but it was never really taken seriously and never made nice. So now it's in here as our office. This is the gravel that needs to be spread out all back here because it is a muddy mess. We have gravel spread out up until there, but then after that, it's just mud. And today it was definitely problematic with tracking mud everywhere. <laughs> this is going to be something that definitely might not have been a great idea. I ordered 300 bags of cement and that is for a platform or a pad, a cement pad here. That's gonna be a 20 foot by 12 foot gazebo type structure. So like a pavilion, a covered pavilion. And it's a great location, sort of central in the campground for people that are hanging out at the playground, have some covered space here. It's really the only public covered space in the campground, especially because our TP tents out front are gonna get taken down because they've been damaged. So 300 bags of cement. I'm gonna try a dry pour technique, which might be a little bit controversial, but I think it's gonna work for the purpose that we need. And uh, unfortunately, this pallet here got delivered with some of the bags exposed. So they're probably shot because of all the rain. But this is going to be a project for the next week. We're not going to have it done by opening, but it'll be something that definitely my guys that are going to work on this with me are going to kill me for. Today is a day I don't think I'll ever forget. You know, when we decided to open our campground in April, we knew that we were gonna face some challenges with weather, but I don't think we could have ever expected it to be just this bad. With all the rain and the snow, and even after my late night trip to Home Depot, it was snowing again. We open this campground tomorrow one way or the other, it's gonna happen. Here we go. <laughs> 